You should go see Captain Marvel before Endgame comes out. Go. Go right now if you haven't already. You cannot stop me from talking about Captain Marvel more. Uh, hi everyone, it's Rosie. So I recently made a video where I talked a lot about the backlash and general response to Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel, but I didn't really get to talk about the movie itself much, and I want to. I said in that video that I'd give Captain Marvel a B+, maybe an A-, minus, depending on my mood, and I stand by that. I liked this movie. I actually liked it more on a rewatch, which I will explain in a bit. And let me just say, that I have a lot of Captain Marvel comics. I have some of the 2012 run, I have the entire 2014 run, um, I have some of the 2018 run, Rise of Alpha Flight, Mighty Captain Marvel, A-Force, which she's in. I'm a fan. And I will try really hard to not let my background with those comics influence too much of this review, since the movie should stand um, as an introduction to her character. So this is going to be a good old-fashioned review, what I liked and what I thought could have been better about Captain Marvel. Um, lots of spoilers, by the way, like 100% for everything. Let's go. So, things that I liked. Number one, Carol herself, especially the way that Brie Larson played her. Weirdly, this is a thing that I hear other people complain about, but whatever, it's my review. For the first act of the film, Carol has a very understated personality, very stoic, with just a hint of her wry kind of humor. This makes sense. After all, she spent the last six years fully submerged in the Cree culture and being told to repress her emotions. Still, we see a little of her humor peeking through, like when she asks Jan Rog to fight after waking him up, or when she pokes fun at Atlas before their mission. But once Carol gets some more of her memories back and gets to Earth, we see more and more of her true self poking through. Her banter with Fury is some of the highlights of the film, and then her full awakening when she gets all her memories back and she's able to fully reconnect with Maria is just cathartic. We see her laugh and play with Monica. We see this woman who has found joy again. There's just so many good little moments of humor with Carol in this film. When she makes Fury tell her the secret about the toast, her poking fun at the shield hat, her shit-eating, I swear I put it in here, remark when Jan Rog realizes that she doesn't have the Tesseract, are all just really enjoyable and endearing. Uh, and Brie Larson plays all of it so well. Like, there's, there's that moment when Carol finds a picture of herself in the files about the plane crash, and the way she plays it, all the emotions so tight to her chest, it's just, it's really excellent. Like, you feel that emotion. And I think it's really tempting to watch Captain Marvel the first time, and not engage with Carol's stoicism in the first act, and take a bit to warm up to her character. That's what happened to me. And even once I was on board with her character, I was left with the feeling that I didn't like the first third very much. However, going in a second time, and knowing that the stoicism is part of this thematic arc about Carol learning to embrace her emotions and not hold herself back, makes all those scenes read better. It also makes all the interactions with Jan Rog more powerful, like his nervousness when he finds out that she's on Earth has a whole new meaning now. Also, just as a comic comment, I love the changes they made to Carol's backstory for how she got her powers. Making her make the choice to blow the engine gives her character a lot more agency than she normally gets in her origin story in the comics, so good choice there. Uh, yeah, that's number one. I like the character herself. Two. Thematically, the movie totally works for me. Like, a lot of superhero origin stories tend to feel a little... Mm, samey when it comes to theme. Dude who is kind of a mess uh, has to find their inner strength and learn what it means to be a hero, great responsibility, and all that. There's often a level of maturing past selfishness or arrogance. We see that with Iron Man and Thor and <laughs> Doctor Strange and... Ant-Man, even Spider-Man in some of his movies, it's, it's common. But it's not really the theme that Captain Marvel goes for. Vers isn't a selfish, arrogant mess, and she doesn't learn to mature. That's not her arc. Instead, her arc is remembering her own strength and breaking away from the powers that have sought to hold her back, pushing against past propaganda. She learns that the Kree narrative of the war is a lie, and that she has been used as a weapon of genocide, that the Kree have literally been suppressing her powers to keep her as a tool. 
So we get this cool theme about defying this imperialist militaristic state and standing up for refugees and not letting yourself be held back by people who would benefit from your compliance, which is really cool for an origin movie, and I dig it. And I think that theme, obviously generalized, about not holding yourself back for the comfort and benefit of others, resonated with me a lot, and with plenty of other people too. Now, we can get into the fact that the Air Force helped with this film, and Carol's new colors are specifically modeled off Monica's Air Force shirt, which does muddy the message some, but that's more of an industry issue than anything unique to this film. Also, I think a lot of people wanted this movie to be more feminist in its theming than it was. It's not really a feminist film. Other than the fact that it addresses Carol experiencing sexism in her life, the movie doesn't really explore, like, feminist themes or ideas super deeply. And that's okay. I don't think that every female-led film needs to be a feminist film. It just is what it is. And as a feminist, there's plenty there to read and enjoy and relate to, and that's good enough for me. Number three, and maybe I'll get some flack for this, but I really liked the 90s girl power songs. I, just, I loved it. I loved Carol kicking the shit out of the Cree while I'm just a girl played. It, just, it, fight me. Okay, so what are some things that I thought could have been better? One, the first third of the film. <laughs> I know, I know. It is better on a rewatch when you know that the twist is coming, um, but that also means that I wish that the Star Force had been set up more. Like, give me more interactions with Yon Rog. Give me more banter with Atlas and Minerva. More time with the team would have made that reveal about the Kree and Yon Rog in particular more impactful. Like, I loved Carol's quip about not hanging out with Minerva, but it would have been better if we had seen more of their interactions earlier in the film. And part of this might also come from my background with the comics. I think that Carol's best stories are the ones set in space. That cosmic setting works really well with her power set, and I think it opens the door to more interesting color palettes and settings than, like, dark blockbuster video. Hala has the best aesthetics in the whole film, and spending more time there would have been nice visually. And yeah, I know that runtimes and pacing are a concern, but I, I just think it would have been good. Number two. Tone and aesthetics. Despite being narratively the weakest part of the film, all the stuff on Hala is the best in terms of color palette and design. It reminded me a lot of the first Thor. Once you get to Earth, all the shots have the same muddy, washed out color and generic shot composition that are basically in every other MCU film. Which is a shame, because Ragnarok and Black Panther had some really refreshing color work on them. And I think Marvel just wanted to play it safe with this film. It's important that Carol feels like she fits into the MCU, because she's got to show up in Endgame. But I think the movie could have been more enjoyable if the aesthetic and tone were allowed to be a little more unique. And number three. Okay, I'm just going to go there. I find myself frustrated at how Carol and Maria are written. I love how Carol and Maria are written. I think that their scenes are the most emotional in the whole movie. It's the heart of the film. And I'm just gonna say it, I'm annoyed that Marvel didn't go a step further. It should have been gay. I mean, honestly, other people have already said this and said it better, but the way that Carol, Maria, and Monica are framed as a family in direct parallel to Talos, the Skrull Lady, and the Skrull Girl is very blatant. Monica says they are a family. Maria got all her stuff when Carol died. They have Christmas morning pictures. It's... it's so much. And it's not like Maria and Carol are friends from the comics, like Carol and grown-up Monica know each other, but Maria? Not really. That's all written for this film. And yes, we can talk about unconventional families and how platonic friendships can be like family and all of that. But if we're honest, and this is a cliche, I know. But if Carol was a guy, if, if, if Carl had lost all his memories of Earth and could only remember flashes of his childhood and a woman and a child they were raising together, if he got to Earth and found them, if that child ran out and hugged him, if they had all his things because they were next of kin, if they were called a family, if you kept every line of dialogue the same, even down to the best friend lines, if they had photos of Christmas morning, if this child they had been raising together still had his jacket, like, that would read a certain way to the audience. 
and it frustrates me that we have this very clear coding for this relationship, and then we leave it just big enough to be platonic. And I know, I know, there's all this talk about big blockbuster films struggle with LGBT rep because it would mean the loss of the Chinese market. And I know that some people really want to read them as friends, and that Carol doesn't need a love interest, and whatever, it's fine. But this is my review, and it bothers me, so I'm just saying. So yeah, that's the list. Captain Marvel is not a perfect film, but it's not a bad film. Uh, it did some really interesting stuff with the scroll. Like, is the MCU ever going to do Secret Invasion? Can they still with this new take on the scroll? I don't know. It's got some really nice shots, especially Carol getting her powers and Carol defeating the Supreme Intelligence. It's got a fun soundtrack. Carol's got a really nice and rather unique character arc. It's fun. It's funny. And I think more people will like Carol more when they see her bounce off the other Avengers. I find that in the comics, she works best in teams. Like, she's great in A-Force when she's hanging out with She-Hulk. She's really fun in Alpha Flight when we see her interact with Monica and America Chavez. She's really fun in the 2014 Captain Marvel run when she's with the Guardians of the Galaxy for a while. And I think that's where her strength lies, so I'm looking forward to seeing her in a more ensemble role. Especially her and Rocket Raccoon. They are friends in the comic and their interactions are great. Rocket's sarcasm and Carol's dry wit are a joy to watch, and I love if the MCU captured their weird little friendship. I'm also really hopeful that we'll see adult Monica in Phase 4. So if she was 11 in 1995, then in 2020 she would be 36. So let's get some Photon up in here. Also, in the comics, Carol is good friends with Spider-Woman Jessica Drew. So let's get that going as well, please and thank you. Also, Kamala Khan's origin story needs Carol to exist in the universe as a well-known hero, so we can get that going now. And as always, I want a She-Hulk film. So thank you for watching. Down in the comments, tell me what you want Marvel to tackle next. But really, if you liked watching this queer millennial feminist rant for a few minutes, do all the YouTube stuff. And be sure to check out my Patreon where you can vote on an upcoming video.